saw a car careening into a bus bench, hitting a husband, a wife, and their two children, and one of them would die. And now police are trying to figure out what caused the crash. Local 10 News reporter Carlos Suarez live in Hollywood with the latest on the surviving victims. Carlos. Folks who heard the crash said that the cries for help were unmistakable. Two kids calling for their injured mother and their father lay dead a few feet from them. Family, friends, and loved ones are mourning 34-year-old Amir Michael Peleg. The father of two died Sunday when a driver crashed into him and his family at a bus stop. I saw ambulances coming. I saw cops coming. It was just a whole big commotion. The accident happened on Collins Avenue and 174th Street in Sunny Isles Beach. Daybreak showed where the car jumped the sidewalk and crashed into the family before coming to a stop at a concrete planter. I went southbound and I saw a body laying here with uh, covered in a yellow cover. And I saw a stroller, a baby stroller, and it was like, it made me cry. It's, it's, it's a tragedy. Amir's wife, Zulma, and their six and two year old daughters were also hit by the car. Folks who live in the area said the cries from the children were heartbreaking. He told me that uh, right after the accident, he heard. Uh, you know, people screaming and a baby crying, mommy, mommy. The children were airlifted to Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital and their mother was rushed to another hospital. At last check, the family is expected to be okay. Thank God I didn't see it happen because it's very hard and painful to see. The mother and two kids are listed in fair condition here at the hospital. The driver stayed on the scene and has been identified as 26 year old Joseph Franco. It's unclear what charges, have, if any, he'll face because of the crash. We're live outside Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital in Hollywood. I'm Carlos Suarez, Local 10 News. Our Carlos Suarez, thanks a lot. And also at 530, investigators are trying to figure out how this seaplane ended up belly up in the bay. That scene creating quite the spectacle for Sunday's beachgoers. And amazingly, the pilot uh, ended up walking away from the crash without any injuries, but this could have been so much worse. Local 10's Nikki Bohan joins us now with the latest on this investigation into the crash. Nikki. Janine and Calvin, that pilot was by himself on this plane. You're right, it could have been worse. He could have been taking someone somewhere, being on a charter, something like that. But he was alone, they say, when he came down in the waters right off of Port Miami. And we're told by Miami-Dade Fire he was looked at at the hospital, but he is home today. The pilot, rescued out of this overturned seaplane in government cut Sunday, is resting at home and is reportedly doing fine. The plane, operated by Tropic Ocean Airways, was removed out of the ocean by Sunday evening and will be examined by the NTSB as part of their investigation into what happened. Before Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Units and other Marine officers responded to the scene, we're told a good Samaritan helped get that pilot out of harm's way. Tropic Ocean Airways is run out of Fort Lauderdale, but also operates out of the Miami Seaplane Base on Watson Island. No word yet on where that pilot was coming from at the time of the crash. And you can see that's the Miami Seaplane base right there on Watson Island, just behind the Children's Museum. We stopped by there today. We're still waiting on a response from Tropic Ocean Airways as to what happened. But as we know, the NTSB investigation moves a lot more slowly and it'll take some time before we know exactly what caused the plane to go down and the waters behind me. I'm live in Miami this evening. Nikki Mohan, Local 10 News. Nikki, thank you. A reward is now up to $37,000 for information leading to the arrest of the killing of a two-year-old boy who was just playing in his front yard. Carnell Thomas was shot to death in December in the area of Southwest 214th Street and 114th Court of Miami. If you know anything about his death, call police or Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous. And right now, a toddler is in critical condition after nearly drowning in a pool. BSO rushed to the scene where they performed CPR on the girl who's believed to be about two years old. She was then taken to Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital in Hollywood. Sky 10 over the scene in Broward's West Park neighborhood. The whole thing happened near Southwest 53rd Avenue and 18th Street. We're now working to learn more on the victim's condition. And turning now to a one and only exclusive here, Miami Dade Fire Rescue says high temperatures played a role in this high rise inferno in Sunny Isles Beach. Crews had to evacuate the Arlen House condo building on Bayview Drive near Collins Avenue yesterday. After the fire was put out, officials determined building materials left on top of the high rise ignited in the sun and heat. 
People were eventually allowed back inside. No injuries were reported. Papano Beach police officers make an arrest after a man allegedly tried to set his home on fire with six family members inside at the time. He told police he was mad because of how much money his wife spends and because he says she's mean to him. Well, police say James Davenport bought two gallons of gasoline and poured it on his home Sunday afternoon. His wife and four children were inside at the time. Police did arrest Davenport before he could set the home on fire, telling police he, quote, went too far. A horrific crash leaving two people dead after a car slammed into a tree just off of I-95 in Miami. Another passenger was taken to the hospital and police say the car was speeding alongside a pickup truck before then crashing at the exit of Southwest 25th Road. Police say the driver of the pickup fled the scene. If you have any information about this, call police. Fort Lauderdale Fire Rescue has sworn in the first female fire chief in its department's history. There she is being congratulated. Rhoda May Kerr was sworn in today at the Parker Playhouse. She is a fourth generation firefighter. Kerr began her career in fire service in Fort Lauderdale in 1983. She then served as the first female fire chief in both Austin, Texas and Little Rock, Arkansas. We are privileged to call ourselves firefighter and the values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor and integrity are ones we must strive to exemplify whether in uniform or not. And from now on, she will oversee a team of more than 400 firefighters and administrative staff. Congratulations to her. Good luck to, to her. her as well. Absolutely. Girl power in effect. Huh? <laughs> well, Bahamas boat blast. All new at 6. New details about the victims on board a tour boat that exploded off the coast of Exuma as one patient is flown to South Florida for treatment. Well, some heroes wear capes. Others, well, they wear fur coats. Meet one true hero who also happens to be one girl's best friend. Holiday safety alert, the safety announcement, and plea from families victimized by stray bullets. We want to take you back now to Doral, the area to avoid 41st Street and 115th through 117th Avenues because of this. It is a water main break that has turned into some sort of a sinkhole. You can see where that water is gushing out onto the road there, causing so much standing water. Once again, 41st Street, 115th through 117th Avenues. First responders on the scene here. Luckily, no one injured in this case, but again, sky 10 over this one, this breaking news in Doral. We'll have a lot more from Janice Fernandez and others in the area as soon as we can get an update for you. We're back in a moment.
Welcome back. Sky 10 is over this breaking news in Doral here. An area to avoid. You can see that water still gushing out of the street here in Doral, causing all of that standing water from a water main break. All of this is happening on 41st Street between 115th and 117th Avenues. At one point, we actually saw troopers blocking off the exit so that people don't come into this area. But you can see police are on the scene. Utilities crews are now probably working fast and furiously to cap that leak because look at this, what a mess, an area to avoid tonight. Our own Janice Fernandez is following this and we'll have much more as we get it. And right now a holiday safety alert and this comes from both the public and police as they try to make sure your 4th of July is a safe one. That campaign is about stray bullets and encouraging people not to shoot their guns in the air. Too often celebration can turn to tragedy. Local 10's Alex Finney reports. Oftentimes, we know that innocent bystanders and children end up being casualties to gunfire. And the event here today at Legion Park was really stressing the point of no bullets, no guns this holiday as we get ready to roll into the 4th of July. Law enforcement stressed today that they will be on high alert this 4th of July. Guns need to be absent. Local officials say that it never fails every year following the 4th. There are always reports of someone getting shot as a result of using a deadly weapon to celebrate. Local leaders say the don't shoot message has been one they've been spreading for years. But the hope is that this year more people will listen. Too many young kids, too many people have been shot or injured or killed by stray bullets. And we're sick and tired of it. That's why we've been doing it for 21 years. I always tell people what happened in my community can happen in your community. They call it celebratory, celebratory shooting. It's harmful. It's dangerous. Just don't shoot. Don't pick up the guns. Miami-Dade Police making sure the public understands that if you fire a gun, you will be charged. And not only is this dangerous, but it is also a crime. We know that Reverend Starling, as well as other officials that were out here today, said yes, they've been doing this for decades, but they plan on continuing it until this message resonates with the community. Coming to you from Miami, Alex Finney, Local 10 News. So heroes don't always wear capes. Sometimes they just have fur coats, four legs, and paws, <laughs> and they're going to stick by you no matter what. So that is exactly what Todd, a golden retriever puppy, did for his owner. This happened when a woman named Paula Goodwin went to take her pups for a walk in Austin, Texas yesterday, and she almost stepped on a rattlesnake. Oh. That rattlesnake was ready to strike, but this guy, Todd, threw himself in the wow. middle, took the bite for her wow. right on his very own face. Well, Paula immediately took him to the vet, mm. posted this picture of little Todd's swollen face oh online saying, this is what a hero looks like. She says, by the way, Todd is doing remarkably well and is truly a warrior. No doubt about that. Not taking a bullet, yeah. but taking a bite. Taking a snake bite. <laughs> I don't know what's Todd. worse. That's, uh, well, good for Todd. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what a <laughs> great story. Well, no doubt about it. It's not always what the temperature says on the screen, but mm -hmm. what it feels like when you step outside. And it is steamy, Betty. <laughs> Indeed, we're going to be saying that for the rest of the summer, turning it up a notch, feeling like 100 at times this afternoon, but looking oh so pretty, standing out on Mallory Square. Just look at that light chop out on the waters. It looks as though we're headed into a fabulous evening. 88 in Fort Lauderdale, Miami. You were 90 last hour. Now you went back up to 91. Key West showing 88 degrees. Winds from the northeast at six miles per hour. Showers and storms. We do see some developing primarily over interior areas of Broward and Dade. Not a whole lot, but just enough for us to talk about. Certainly keeping an eye on those skies around Weston down towards southwest ranches looks as though some outflow blowing in your direction so maybe a little shower tries to get going along that or maybe the temperatures feel slightly cooler here's the view around dade we do see one thunderstorm to talk about pretty close to us right on chrome avenue so there's kendall lakes and here's the thunderstorm sitting on chrome avenue you can see the flashes of lightning i'll be watching to see if this builds out more, maybe the brunt of the rainfall stays just west of Kendall Lakes, but just spotty activity to watch for the rest of tonight. And a lot of that is going to favor the interior with our winds from the east northeast. 10 o'clock tonight, scattered clouds, 81 degrees, the temperature in Miami and things looking a OK. There is an upper level low, by the way, churning out over the Atlantic waters over the western Atlantic. And notice on the back side of that, there is some drier air. This feature is going to push toward the west and get closer to us 
as we're heading toward Tuesday. We'll stay in that zone where the air is drier in the mid and upper levels, at least drier compared to some other areas of the Atlantic and also over the Gulf waters. But then watch what happens on Wednesday. We get in a flow that allows our available moisture to increase around that upper level low and our rain chances are going to be increasing too just in time for the 4th of July. So tomorrow's a good day. Can't rule out a shower or storm, but Wednesday a better chance for seeing some showers and storms uh, for the afternoon hours, maybe for the early evening. I just want you to be aware whatever happens, don't cancel your plans. I will be fine tuning the forecast tomorrow. Janine. Okay, 40% doesn't look too bad. No. Betty, thank you. So residents of a Boise, Idaho apartment community, they're in shock after a man with a knife stabbed several people at a child's birthday party over the weekend. So tragic. And what's more, investigators say that this man you see here targeted the child's party. You're about to see in a few moments here. But now we're learning that a three-year-old little girl has died from her injuries. Our Janice Fernandez is in production control now with the very latest. Janice. Well, Calvin, right now police are trying to pinpoint an exact motive, but what we do know is this man walked in specifically targeting those children, and it wasn't until those adults intervened that he started to attack them. A knife-wielding man stormed a three-year-old girl's birthday party, stabbing her, five other children, and three adults, all of them refugees. Our victims are some of the newest members of our community. They're victims from their past homes who have fled violence from Syria, Iraq, and Ethiopia. The rampage happened at an apartment complex in Boise at around 845 Sunday night. Police say this man, 30-year-old Timothy Kinner, who is from Los Angeles, had been invited to stay for a few days at the apartment of a renter who was showing him compassion. But because of his disruptive behavior, he was asked to leave. Then the stabbing spree unfolded. He returned last night to exact vengeance, not just on those that he had been with as they were not at the apartment, but at any target which was available. Two children described the horrifying scene. We saw, we we saw, saw him saying like bad words and, and killing and, our yeah. and stabbing our friends. We've learned that three-year-old girl has died. Eight people injured, six of them children, three of the victims left with life-threatening injuries. Kinner is charged with nine counts of aggravated battery and six counts of injury to a child. And again, we have learned that that three-year-old girl tragically died from her injuries. At this point, police are not ready to call this a hate crime. Calvin, Janine. So sad. Janice, thank you. All new at 6 now, a gator taking a dangerous dip. This big guy you're about to see spotted in a swimming pool, getting some relief from all of our oppressive heat. Plus, there may not have been any wreckage recovered at sea, but some weed was, and you're not going to believe how much. But first, do not try this at home. Police want you to see this at home so that your 4th of July is a safe one. We'll have details after the break. And we want to take you back to Doral where there's been a water main break and a big police scene. We have just learned from Miami-Dade College's West Campus, they have suspended all operations until further notice because of the mess here in Doral. 41st Street. That exit off the turnpike, that's an area to avoid tonight. Right, and 115th through 117th Avenue, there first responders on the scene trying to make sure that no cars are going to try to get through all of that standing water. A lot more coming up from Sky 10 and reporters on the scene when we come back and see you at the top of the hour.